pole position on the left hand side of the track looking towards Abbey so 105 and 12 on the front row second row is another mini 71 Lawrence War and 16 James Colburn in an Alfa Romeo Julia Sprint GT so the second row is 71 and 16 the third row will have on it 75 James Wright with an Alfa Romeo Alfa 75 uh, and number nine, Neil MacArthur, with, believe it or not, the little Wolseley Hornet, which is a, a, a species of Mini Cooper S, this Wolseley Hornet, although normally it was for the elder generation to buy because it had wood and it had a Wolseley badge on it and they kind of appreciated the older cars, but it's now up to full Cooper S spec. 75 and nine, row three. Row four, uh, number 715 is John Harmer with his Lotus Elan. And beside him, number 56, David Alexander, with an Alfa Romeo Julius Mint GT. 715 and 56, row 4. Row 5, number 771, is Richard Merrill's Alfa GT Junior, uh, which would normally run with a 1600cc engine, but this one's got an enlarged engine to 2 litres. Uh, and alongside him is 151, and that's Johnny Kent with an Austin Cooper S. 771 and 151 is the fifth row. The sixth row, number 32, is Alexander Hewitson's Austin Healey 3000 Mark IIA. The a, little a, very important. Uh, and uh, alongside him is 82, Ben Cater. And he is driving one of the Alphas, the Alfa Romeo Julia, one of the several Alfa Romeo Julia Super saloons. 32 and 82, row six. Row seven, number 66, John Symes. And with all the numbers jumbled up in the program, it's difficult to um, identify where he is at 66. Oh, there he is, near the top. Uh, yeah, John signs with an Alpha, the uh, GT Am, GT AM, and alongside John Heim, uh, John Symes, we've got 116, Frank Horsfield with an Alpha Julietta. You don't see many of those racing. Uh, the uh, Alfetta with a sh shortened boot. 66 and 116, row 7. Row 8, number 77, uh, is Alexander Dupes, Alpha 75, and beside you, number 68, is Mark Gordon with the Jaguar XK150S fixed head coupe 77 and 68 row 8 the ninth row 41 Richard Ibrahim with the only Alpha Sud in the entry the Alpha Sud Sprint little coupe and beside him number 40 is Stephen Chase with another Alpha the Alpha Sud GTV so the Alpha is doing rather well in the West 41 and 40 row 9 row 10 number 21 is Julian Crossley with a Cooper S and 96 Jonathan Horsfield with an Alpha Alfetta GTV 21 and 96 row 10 row 11 number 196 is Neil Merry's Sunbeam Tiger which in these conditions is a car to watch I suggest working its way through the pack because it's got a lot of power it's a quick car Neil Merry number 196 in the Sunbeam Tiger V8 Ford engine of course in that car and beside him number 22 uh, is Gerard Buggy with the Austin Healey shown as an Austin seeping sprite obviously an Austin Healey seeping sprite 196 and 22 row 11 the 12th row number 182 is James Owen with the sports racing Elva Elva Mark V with the Comptry Climax engine and beside you number 15 it's a wonderful entry this we keep on going Andrew Prill with the unique Pandora SP 182 and 15 row 12 row 13 number 11 is David Churchill and he has the Alpha Julia TI saloon and number 30 is Matthew Moore and he is the AC Cobra in these conditions against a car to watch working its way through the 
field in the 30 minutes the race is intended to occupy. 11 and 30, row 13. The 14th row, the car's now lining up. Number 42 uh, is Colin Souter with a Ford Mustang. Again, a big car that didn't fare too well in the very wet conditions uh, during qualifying. And alongside him, number 64 is Max Haycox uh, with an Alfa Julia Sprint GT. 42 and 64, row 40. I don't think we're going to get quite to the back of this. The grid is lining up uh, almost completely now. Uh, on row 15, we've got number 19. Number 19 is Andrew Summerton's Lotus Elan. And beside him, number 92 is Fred Shepherd with a wonderful machine for the wet conditions, the Ford Galaxy. Anyway, we're ready to go then uh, with, or nearly ready to go, uh, with the front row, a Mini and a Jaguar. The second row, an Alfa Romeo and a Mini. The third row, a Mini and an Alfa 75. The fourth row, another Alfa Romeo and Lotus Elan. A Mini and an Alfa on the next row. An Alfa uh, and an Austin Healey on the next row. And so the grid continues. We don't have a gap actually there, do we? Anyway, the track is now, Marcus, I would say, pretty good. It's uh, obviously not dry, but uh, on the line, it's, I would say, dry. Uh, it's emerging. I think it's probably not quite as good as that. Um, it was very, very slippery underfoot as mm. I came back right. uh, from the pit area. Um, and there's areas of the track where there is water just uh, drifting across the circuit. In fact, you can see just beyond the start there, beyond, yes. uh, the pole oh, yes. man, um, Ben Colburn, there's uh, a fairly sizable streak of water. Um, across the track, green flag waved at the back. We're about to go racing again. Here we go then. So uh, the mini Ben Colburn running is number 121 in the end, not 105. 121 uh, is Ben Colburn in the mini uh, and Grant Williams in the Jaguar Mark II soon. Away we go. Uh, slowly away there was the mini from the third. That was 771 Richard Merrill, I think. But the whole pack now pouring into Abbey with the Jaguar saloon in front. Now, you've seen Grant Williams at Goodwood. He's a bit, bit, bit of a star, isn't he, in that car? He, he certainly is normally in his grey one. Uh, this right. is a different car again, but um, normally he drives the, uh, the old Coombs uh, by one car, doesn't he? Well, he uh, needs to make good his escape, really, doesn't he, before the other quick cars that didn't get to going too well in qualifying. Filtered their way through. Yeah, that's Absolutely. Right. Oh, it was a big bang there. One of the Sebring Sprites has clobbered the 66 Alpha. Uh, and spun it around the pale blue seat. Uh, it's 22, has, um, has hit 66. That's Gerard Buggy. Uh, yeah, it's looking a little bit scruffy now, that car, after that contact that Marcus told us about. There's the midfield, the Elva there, number 182, the Elva Mark 5. There's the Turner, number 3, uh, in the hands of Tony Butt. So there's going to be an awful lot of sorting out of positions going on for the first t 10 minutes or so of this race, isn't there? I would say so. And the, uh, they say the Jag trying to make his escape. There's Nilan moving up really strongly in about fourth or fifth place. Uh, and that may well be that of, um, it's at 715, isn't it? It's former Formula John Ford Harmer. racer, Jonathan Harmer. Yeah, he was, um, on, he was quite well up the grid compared with the others. He was on the th fourth row. Yeah, he's enjoying his racing again. And that's Richard Merrill, isn't it? And the White yes. Alpha bustling his way through as well. Uh, so that's good. And they're right up behind uh, James Colburn in his Alpha. So this is a, a good chase pack forming behind Grant Williams now, the, uh, the Welshman out ahead uh, in his Jag. Yes, had a good race uh, yesterday with this car in the Jack Sears Trophy. There we've got the the Minis. Then the, a, a pair of Alphas, or yeah, a pair of Alphas just staying ahead of the Elan that Marcus was talking about, number 715 of John Harmer. But he may well be able to do something about those Alphas. Remember, the Alphas are running in the separate Classic Alpha Challenge, so there's, there's two races going on here, rather like we had with the Woodcut Trophy and the Sterling Moss Trophy in yesterday's combined races. So the uh, Alphas looking uh, very European Touring Car Championship, aren't they? Those, very much uh, so. 105 Series Alphas. This is sort of Jochen Rindt and Roberto uh, Andrea, and people. Andrea, Andrea Dianovic, yes. Yeah, exactly. And the, um, the Elan from row four going well. James Wright moving up well in the Alpha 75. There's the damaged uh, Alpha, unfortunately, 66, that took that whack amidships mm. at, uh, at, at Village Corner. Richard Ibrahim. No, not Richard no, John, John Sines. Sines. John Sines, sorry. Yes, so coming into Stowe Corner, then the Jaguar Saloon leads. He's not threatened at the moment, but what we'll take a look at when they get to the end of the lap is just where the, the Galaxy and the Mustang have uh, risen up to. Alex Thistlebridge is in there somewhere, should be. Although I don't remember seeing his name on the grid sheet. Yeah, you can see how much spray there yeah, is still coming still. off the tyres. 
That's Jonathan Harmer in the Lotus Elan. 1600cc twin cam engine, of course. And uh, nicely balanced car in these Whee! conditions. Bit of opposite lock there on the part of Grant Williams, to, uh, but he rapidly collects it and uh, keeps pressing on in front. He His lead at the end of that first lap was just half a second, exactly 0.500 of a second was all that uh, Grant Williams' advantage was. But where the big cars are, looking back, there's the Austin Healy, there's the Jaguar XK150. But... Yeah, the, it's just too wet for the moment. Neil Merry's wet, yeah. Tiger and a Mustang yeah. coming through. Yeah, those are down the order. ones I was thinking about, but they are down the order. And they're behind the Pandora. Uh, the amazing yes. car that uh, was raced in period at uh, at Goodwood by Roger Phillips. Right. Yeah, you, you, you saw the Pandora. I was wondering with the car behind, which was the Alpha Sud Sprint Coupe. And there's uh, uh, Gerard Buggy. There's only one Pandora. There's more than that of the Alpha Sud, uh, Sud Sprint uh, Coupe. <laughs> really? Not in this race. <laughs> they survived the rust. Uh, I used to have one. It got stolen. Uh, anyway, back with what's going on up front. It's Grant Williams leading in the Jaguar, uh, but not by much. And having to work very hard as they has got an alpha now closing up. I think that's probably Richard Merrill. In the white yeah, car, yes, yeah, definitely. 771. They're on top of the Jaguar here, though, aren't they? And Merrill's got to go right round the outside. He's got um, he's got Colburn with him, the pole sitter in the um, uh, in the Mini, the 121. They're the two damaged cars. There'll be a discussion, won't there? Uh, uh, yes, a one-eyed Seabring Sprite. It's a very pretty car, the Seabring Sprite, compared with the Frog, I think, but on which it's based. So Grant Williams still hanging on there in front of uh, now Richard Mel. But Richard Mel's come up, as we said, from the fourth row, fifth row even, uh, uh, is the land that started on the fourth row. So Richard Merrill, in what is ostensibly a 1600 GT Junior, like mine, but it's got a bigger engine, not where's, like mine. Where's Yussi Buehling? <laughs> uh, it's Robert Merrill, isn't it? The Pearl Fisher's duet. Yeah, that's right. Well, I, I won't uh, embark on a duet with you, Marcus, now, I don't think. Um, <laughs> anyway, the Jaguar still oh. leads. Great oh, opposite lock applied again. Very spectacular driver, Grant Williams. Remarkable car control. Uh, <clears throat> wasn't it some years ago that he had a great battle with Jerry Marshall? At, oh, uh, very much. They were trying to outdo yeah. each other yes, in terms of tail slides. Yes. And uh, very impressive. Of course, his uh, father was one of the... Uh, uh, the racers of these Jaguars back in the days of the uh, Ford Trust Special Saloon Ta Championship Tony at Williams. Thruxton. Tony Williams, Tony absolutely. Williams, yeah. And they had three of these Risker Garages uh, cars from South Wales. Well, the Jaguar has the pace, down, the grunt down the straight to keep ahead of the Alpha. And the, the Mini with its bouncing bonnet, you notice, uh, ho hopping it's up and down. Chattering, isn't it? Yeah. I've never owned a Jaguar. My dad had a, a, an S-Type Jaguar, but uh, I've had the other two. So uh, I've still got the Junior. Uh, anyway, they're coming into the end of Vale, into Club Corner. So another lap hanging on in front. Very, uh, now, last time, remember, at the end of the lap, he got sideways across the kerb, Grant Williams, but this time he's keeping it neater and tidier, is he? Yeah, I think so. So uh, I think it's a wonderful... He's building up quite a queue, though. It's pretty good to build a queue in, in, on a wide-open circuit like Silverstone, but he's got an Alpha, a Mini, an Elan, another Alpha, and another Mini all coming up behind there's yeah. the number 16 alpha of james colburn yeah james colburn trying to uh, match the elena here comes the sunbeam tiger this is the v8 tussle been joined yes. by the cobra yeah. uh, coming through it's uh, neil merry uh, in the sunbeam tiger ahead of the 42 uh, mustang which is colin souter yeah so they're completing the lap but they're they're well down the order colin souter in 16th place but dropping down the order is the uh, James Colburn, number 16, uh, Alpha. Chris Snowden must have had problems in practice, mustn't he, with that yes. lovely uh, GTV? Yes. Because that's not featuring. He'd expect it to be working through right now if he'd uh, come up from the back. No, he doesn't feature in the, in the top 25. So there's some big tiger there. Uh, Neil Merry has some good races with this car, but... Uh, the conditions against it, really. Another creation of Carol Shelby's fertile imagination. There was a Shelby 123 at Anglesey about three years ago, and Neil Merry featured it. It was one with Kevin Kidlocken right. and the Cobra. Yeah, I was there. Yeah, yeah. There, and yeah. uh, Neil was there, and uh, Larry Tucker with That's the uh, GT350 yeah. Mustang. So here they come again, and it's still just... <laughs> <laughs> Wouldn't like to be driven on the road by him in that way, but uh, certainly 
Uh, very impressive car control by Grant Williams. He loves opposite lock, doesn't he, the slippery surface? He does. He, you, you sense it's a matter of time before the Alpha makes its way through, and, um, and, and young Colburn's not given up, but he stretched the imagination in the Mini. He looks good. It's quite greasy, which is uh, good for the Mini. Well, young Colburn, of course, something of a star in the Renault Clio Cup in recent years. So uh, that doesn't exist anymore, but uh, he was a front runner when it did. And so it's still the Jaguar in front oh, of the Elva. Uh, that's uh, Owen in the, um, the Elva had a spin. There's James Owen with the other Mark V. And they're back fresh out from the pits uh, after that bang in the back and the opening corner, uh, the Alpha number 66. John Symes, yeah, the uh, GTAM rep. It's um, not so jolly club, unfortunately, <laughs> with the uh, wallop on the side. Club, yes. So down into Stow Corner comes the Jaguar, still leading. There's the registration plate, Jag 400. 400 was the number that Tommy Sopley used to like to have on all his cars. If you look at as in the Cooper Jaguar yes, yesterday, which we yes. saw do so well. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so the letters were not quite so important, but the 400 was very important. Another Colburn up into fourth now because uh, in the Alpha just displaced Harmer into Stowe. Yes, I think his transponders probably stopped working because he's uh, not shown there. Exactly. There we go, nice sideways over the uh, over the curb slithering, but he's under attack now from uh, Richard Merrill, who comes up the inside towards Abbey. Hasn't quite got the leg no. in the straight line, though, has he? And <laughs> Grant Williams flies across the nose of the Alpha just to uh, keep that advantage uh, up through towards Village. Two absolute classics, these cars, aren't they? The, the, the Mark II Jaguar and the... Uh, the Alpha, the 105 series shape just looks gorgeous. Yeah, that Bertoni styling is wonderful, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, absolutely. And there's the Wolseley Hornet. Now oh, we've got the, the Wolseley Hornet there. Uh, the Mini with the boot. Uh, the, the Mini with the boot and the wood. Uh, Neil MacArthur at the wheel. And that car currently is... It's dropped down the order, rather, from where we had it. Let's see what I can find out. It's down in 33rd place now, so it's, it's fallen away a bit. I don't see too many Alphas in dark blue, do you? Uh, no, you don't, and I don't think it suits them, I'm afraid. But uh, you've got to have a red or white or yellow as a colour, or French racing blue. The, the, you can get that as a colour as well, even though it's French. There's the Healy number 32 of Alexander Hewitson. Where did we find him now? He's in 10th uh, place, going nicely, just ahead of the Alfetta number 77 of Alex Dupe. There's Mark Gordon in the SK150, followed by the Wolseley Hornet. There was the uh, alternative version of the, the the booted Mini, which was the Riley Elf. Which my Auntie Doreen had one, which she's very <laughs> proud of, in green, a lovely green with a white roof. It's the sort of car that an Auntie Doreen would have. Well, she did. <laughs> right, so... Yeah, looking at the gold wheels on that dark blue Alpha, it, it's it's... Mm. It's OK, but uh, red is better. Blue is be good for a Jaguar, though. Are and any Campagnolos uh, or Cremadoras, do you think? I'm sorry, can't, can't offer a view on that. <laughs> uh, <laughs> mine just have standard steel wheels. Uh, so coming into the uh, right-hander there. Oh, they're going to be challenged now as they... And James Colburn's in the mix now. Yes. Big style. Come in the on red to hang a straight. He said it was awful this morning in qualifying. He hated it. it a Jaguar, two Alphas and a Mini are uh, the leading quartet. We haven't been keeping tabs on the time. Still 18 minutes to go. Fastest lap last time around set by uh, number 151, which is Johnny Kent in his Cooper S. There's a Lotus Cortina wandering around a bit. That's Rich Rachel Kirby. Got going again. And, oh, here comes uh, Colburn in the red alpha down the inside. But uh, Grant yeah. Williams gets his nose in there. Ah. Just... It's wonderful stuff. It's this, superb, isn't it? Isn't it? Absolutely it's brilliant. Very much four for the lead with uh, Ben Colburn in the fourth place. We've got the, the invisible red alpha. Whee! Invisible to the Whoa. top. Oh, and Richard Merrill. <laughs> well, it began with, the tail out. It, it, it with Grant Williams mm. going one way sideways. And, and it was sort of... Uh, and now it's James Colburn in second place. Yes. Uh, Richard Merrill in third. And uh, Ben Colburn in fourth. But see, the Red Alpha still invisible to the timekeeping system. But there are not many drivers who could control a, a Jaguar Mark II oh, like this. It's a huge slide for yeah. James Colburn. It loses out to Merrill. 
Uh, and Ben Colburn's in on the act as well with the uh, with the mini. Yeah, so the mini number 121 there. Yeah, it's a corking race, this one. Brilliant. Now waiting for them to come over the brow down the Wellington Strait. And it... it oh, we're going to cut to the, the, the Walsley Hornet there. Back with the leaders coming into Brooklands. Can the Alain catch them as well? Not at the moment. Not quite, no. It's interesting. I've got James Colburn up on the outside in the red alpha, and uh, he may find more grip there. Now he tucks the inside on the exit, and the Jag blocks the uh, white alpha, and the red alpha comes sailing through. Or does he? Or does he? Yes, exactly. <laughs> and get onto the heritage pit straight. Uh, and, and he's made it. Oh, he's made it. But can he hang on to it? Because uh, the, the Jaguar has the grunt down the straight. Can he get back onto the inside line going into Cop's corner? What's going to happen here? He's got back in front. Yes, he has. So uh, Grant Williams is back in the lead. Not for long. Um, not for long, no. The better traction out of the corner for the Alpha. Uh, and so into the lead has gone, number 16. But that's not appearing on the timing page which makes me wonder whether it's lost a lap. Oh, and completely sideways there. Full opposite lot there by Grant Williams in the Jaguar. So he's now got to contend with another Colburn in the person. He's around the outside. And uh, Ben Colburn ben has come Colburn. around the outside. It's Colburn's one and two. And Merrill's been shaken back to fourth. It looked like Merrill, a lap or so ago, was the most likely to challenge uh, the leader, or the erstwhile leader in the Jag, Grant Williams. Your XK, more alphas. The uh, Owen Elver is going again. Wherever you look, there's alphas. That's the XK 150 of uh, Mark Gordon. Fending off the uh, blue alpha number 174 of Frank of uh, Ambrogio Perfetti. The chupa chup lollipop man. Indeed. Followed by yet more Alfa Romeos and the Wolseley Hornet. The Elvis, he says, has got to go again, but he must be a lap behind. But I'm still puzzled about whether the uh, number 16 lost a lap. Because it's just not appearing it's on the... has been there all the time. Well, that's what I would have thought. It's shown as having completed four laps... Out of the... Having done the fastest lap uh, in 31st place. It's not so, a sort of a special penalty for... No, I, I'm, I'm just wondering whether it, it, it got, went missed on the opening lap. Anyway, for the moment, they're not... Normally, TSL would slot it in, having uh, decided it must be a transponder problem. But it is leading the race. And we're now uh, watching the little Wolseley Hornet go through. There's the Mark Gordon Jaguar XK150S and Boggio Perfetti's uh, Alpha, then the more delivered... Alpha and the, the Elva, which I think must be after it's spin a lap behind. So the leader coming into, we think it's the leader, uh, the number 16. Making their way up are um, uh, Alex Dupe in the 77 Alpha and uh, Alexander Hewitson uh, in the uh, Healy number 32. Whoa. They're ninth and tenth. Oh, a huge that was slide full of opposite lot, yeah. yeah. I'm, I'm just wondering, Marcus, whether 16 is a lap down. The, the, the Jag did, he swatted the Mini there, yeah. but um, I think he's hanging together. But uh, no, he's not a lap down. We've seen him there all the while. Well, did we see him on the first lap is what's going through my mind. Mm. Well, I think we did. Uh, mm. Right, well, the timekeepers haven't discovered him. It's, uh, the uh, screen's still telling us that the Jag was leading, but of course it isn't anymore anyway because up into second place has come the number 771 uh, alpha of Richard Merrill and then the mini is third having started on pole position number 121 Ben Colburn's mini and Grant Williams is in third or fourth uh, sorry is well third or fourth place Jonathan Harmer and the um, Elan sort of fallen back towards um, uh, Kent in the uh, mini Johnny the Kent mini yes Well, many of these cars running to period specification, so-called Appendix K, but some aren't strictly to that. 
Still the Mini's uh, bonnet chattering up and down. <laughs> but uh, Grant Williams certainly has put up an epic struggle to keep the Alphas and the Mini behind him, but uh, it looks now as though he's going to have to settle for third or fourth place. There's the Telefunken uh, Alfetta, modelled by Burago, I think. Oh, really? Period, yes. Oh, okay. Right, well, the leaders have gone through, uh, and it is confirmed that 771 is the leader, still ignoring the number 16 car of James Colburn. So 771 Richard Merrill is the alternative leader from the Mini of Ben Colburn, number 121, and then Grant Williams in the Jaguar. And then behind Grant Williams in the Jaguar is the Lotus Elan, the green Lotus Elan, number 715 of uh, John Harmer. Then we've got the Austin Healy of Alexander Hewitson, which is uh, number 32 running in 10th place, yes, I thought yeah, he was waggled in just the top 10. Waggled its tail as well. Uh, coming all good Healy club. should. Yeah. Followed by another of those uh, gorgeous looking alphas, that's David Alexander's Julius Mint GT. And then the, the later one, which isn't one of the better looking cars, I don't think, the uh, 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 of alphas. They are coming in. Yes, that's now. one of the horse field team yeah. cars, there are a pair of them. Number 96 is the uh, Alfetta GTV. The Alfetta was a great car, but the uh, GTV, not as pretty as the predecessor. And in terms of time, we've got 10 minutes to go still. There's the Alpha 75. So it continues to be, according to the timing screen, number 771 leading the way, Richard Merrill. From James Colburn, oh, sorry, from Ben Colburn in the Mini. There is the Alpha in its mild delivery, number 77 of Alex Jupe, which is in ninth place at the moment. And that car, to you, Marcus, was registered in Chester, the registration number, a Chester number. One twenty-two, the Lotus Cortina of Rachel Kirby, which we saw having a problem earlier. But, uh, Oh, a bit of a graunch on that the was left front practice wing. because I saw yeah. that in the paddock before it went out for the race. 75, bringing back memories of the late John Dooley, who had uh, considerable success on Alpha 75. Don't all Alphas bring back memories of, of, Alpha, of John Dooley? Dooley. <laughs> yes, I'm afraid. He drove lots of them and was very instrumental in uh, yeah. Alpha racing. In this Absolutely. Country. That's yeah. Richard Ibrahim in the 41, sometime mod sports racer. Yes. Is that a genuine registration number? Sud 17S? It probably is, Quite actually. Probably. Yeah. No, mine got nicked. Well, the number plate or the car? The car, unfortunately, yes. Uh, the Cobra has managed to force its way ahead of Neil Murray, so uh, that's, uh, that looks nice, doesn't it? Uh, no, uh, no pain to uh, worry about. Number 30, charged through the field. Well, Neil Murray is shown as 13th in the Tiger. Colin Souter, 14th in the number 42 Mustang, but that Cobra... That's, that's uh, Matthew Moore in the Cobra. Yeah, it's not shown at all. No. Nope. No more. <laughs> or less. Or oh, certainly less more. He may be further down the order. Now, they was, he was running in the company of the Cobra earlier on because yeah. there were the 3v8s because Souter was there in that Mustang as well. But he's not there now. No. On the, the screen. So Colin Souter is there, shown as 14th behind yes. Mary, but um, yes. Yes, the Cobra's ahead of Mary. On the track, but not on the screen. Well, the, uh, the Mustang then, with the bonnet chattering Mini behind. The Mustang's bonnet seems to have lifted in the middle, isn't it? And uh, yeah. it's got more air going in than normal. Yes, 42 Colin Souter then. Uh, in 14th place is um, Ben Colbert, 1963 registered. Yes, in absolutely. The Reg. first time they started bringing those letters in, 1963. Obviously, they began at letter A. 
oh, what's this going on? Uh, down the pit lane comes 56, David Alexander. It looks like it's been on the grass. There's a bit of sort of stuff hanging underneath. He's go getting going again. Well, the history of Alphas in uh, autocross, <laughs> from what I remember. I saw a Jaguar XK120 autocross, autocross back in the day. I also claimed to see an HWM Jaguar in an autocross, yeah. Really? I'll tell you that story one day. Here's the, uh, the Elva, and then the uh, Alpha sliding nicely as it comes out of club corner. But the Elva has dropped back a long way because of its uh, earlier spin. So it's not really in the running at all. Right, so there's the Elan in fourth place. Number 716, the car of... 715, the car of John Harmer. Being given a hard time by the Mini number 151 of Johnny Kent. And then uh, Larry War, I think, in the uh, the white Mini behind yes, them. Yes, that's right. Close is, right yeah. in. It's amazing that the land's not able to run away from the Minis, but it uh, shows you how slippery it must be. It's raining again, isn't it? Because they've got a lot of... All their uh, wipers are come on, yeah. going. Is it probably not looking out of the window? What you can see, it doesn't look as there's much rain. Yes, I poked my head out of the door and there was just an odd spot. Little drop. Yeah. All right, so the Elan continues to fend off the minis as they get involved in their own little battle. Oh, is that the Elva having another spin? I think it, it is. is, isn't it? El Nevapa. Not for the moment, anyway. That's Brooklyn's on the apex. Got to wait for a whole... Oh, there's the Turner coming into the pit lane. That's uh, Tony Butt's car. Novice cross on yeah. the boot. So down the pit lane comes the little Turner, a car made famous by songstress Petula Clark. Had two. Pet one and pet two was the registration. <laughs> so there's what we think is the leader. But the timekeeping team it's agreed. <laughs> they don't accept that as the leader. Uh, in second place, or first, depending on which information you use, uh, is the number 771, Richard Merrill, white. Uh, and, Alpha's alpha. and Alpha's going to win, isn't it? And there's the Alpha chasing. I mean, the lap times are, must be broadly very similar. Oh, oh, I think 151 has a spin. The Alpha's still is, sitting uh, there. Johnny Kent. Here come the Marshals. Oh, dear. Fortunately, it's a little elder. They're not very heavy cars, these, if uh, it comes to pushing something. Signed by Frank Nichols, made, yeah. in, uh, made in East Sussex. Well, there, there is the number 16 car of James Colburn. And coming out onto the straight, then. Three and a half minutes to go. The uh, curious windscreen wipers of the 105 Alpha, they sometimes get stuck, they sort of interlink, which is very embarrassing in a rainstorm. Although you shouldn't take an Alpha out in the rain, really. Not an old one. So down through Vale. Three minutes, as Marcus says, to go. And we have two possible winners. There's your Pandora, Marcus. Indeed. It's got a, a BMC uh, engine in it. Andy Prill driving it, the Porsche specialist from... Uh, so it's not straight uh, out of the box then? No, no, no. It Pandora's was box. Ooh, it was restored uh, um, over several years. Right. Debuted a couple of years ago. And, uh, and Roger Phillips, oh. who, who raced it in period, That's a good shot. came to see it. At, uh, uh, That's David Churchill. On his way again. Well, the leaders, 
let's say this is a battle for the lead because it's cl they've closed right up as the race enters its final a few minutes, a couple of minutes. So it is still 16 leading James Colburn. We've got one more lap after this. Yeah. Here. And um, I, I can't recall one of these Alpha races in recent times. It hasn't been won by either Colburn or Merrill. Um, Snowden's normally there, Chris Snowden, uh, but um, he's obviously had problems this morning in uh, qualifying. So down they come into Brooklands, and they get one more lap. Yes, they will get one more lap in after this one, but the, the lap times they're doing. Fastest lap, incidentally, has been set. Ah, look what we have on the screen. A Colburn. A number 16 Colburn in the lead. Just, after just our, as he's about to lose it. <laughs> we should have had, we did have complete faith in Marcus's lap. It's just that normally TSL would correct that earlier than they did. So this is really a battle for lead, even according to the timekeeping screen. And here they come through Woodcut. That was the SLR Morgan, wasn't it? We've just uh, seen there. A Triumph, Mor uh, the Triumph SLR. SLR of Richard Dodkins. Yeah, dodgy has been around for a long time, that car. It's owned uh, still uh, by Tony Griffin, as far as I'm right. aware. I think it's a new Dangerfield car, isn't it? Oh, OK. So here they come then. It's uh, red from white. It's still just James Colburn leading. We just need the green one now to... <laughs> complete the tricolore effect. Yes, that's right. We can't find it. You know, There's a green stripe on the lead car. Yeah, yeah. Okay, right, we'll settle for that then. Uh, so how's this going to resolve itself? We've got 33 seconds. They're coming on to Hangar Straight. Ahead of them is... A whole Adolf. raft of traffic. Yeah, including the... SLR we were talking about, number 23. Yep, another Napolina car, this time a, a GTV, Alfetta GTV. Yeah. All right, J James Colburn just about hanging on. Yeah, he's got a... He's, whoa, this could be tricky because there's a lot of cars. And this will be the last lap. They're just going to make it at the end of this lap, the 30 minutes are up. Yeah, we are. So here they come then. It's going to be number 16 who's going to win. So, across the line comes number 16, James Colburn. He wins the race by virtually nothing at all because coming right back at him in that final corner uh, was number 771. The uh, Richard Merrill White Alfa Romeo GT Jr. And uh, three, fleeing the car through uh, club corner on the last that way off the tarmac uh, was the Mini. J uh, ben Culber, number 121, finishing in third place. Fourth place is going to go to, has gone to the Jaguar, who enlivened the opening laps, Grant Williams. Fifth place, the Lotus Elan, number 715, of John Harmer. And sixth place to Lawrence Wall's Mini, number 71. Seventh place to 151. Johnny Kent's Mini Cooper S. In eighth place, the next of the Alphas, the number 75 car uh, of James Wright, the Alpha 75, number 75. In eighth place, losing a place on the last lap, in fact, losing more than one place on the last lap, number 151. In fact, he's not come through yet, Johnny Kent. Yeah, that spin, didn't he? We saw, we saw yeah. the, car, um, the green mini spin at some come point. Come through now in ninth place, losing a couple of places. So dropping behind the alphas of uh, number 75. Right. Well, uh, yeah, James Wright uh, and Alex Jupes, Alfetta GTV number 77 in ninth place. And in tenth place, Mark Gordon in the Jaguar XK150 S fixed head coupe. In the, diff in the two races that were going on at the same time there, the Dunlop All-Stars, then the... Uh, Winner of that is Ben Colburn, isn't it? In the 121 Mini, in third place overall. Yep, quickest in qualifying, Ben yeah. Colburn. But uh, brother James from row two has won the race. Yes, he, he, he just to go carry on with the All Stars. So first of the All Stars is Ben Colburn. Second of the All Stars, Grant Williams. Third of the All Stars is John Harmer in the Alan. And then the Alphas, the top three, James Colburn number 16, then second of the Alphas, number 771, Richard Merrill, and third of the Alphas, 
some way down actually in eighth place the number 75 alpha 75 of james wright the um matthew moore and the ac cobra won the um the v8 tussle just got home ahead of neil merry in the um Sunbeam Tiger and then Colin Souter. Uh, although, again, we don't have that number um, 30 car of Matthew no. Moore, which started on row 13 um, on the timing screen. Yeah, so it looked, I mean, we think he was in the same sort of situation as number 16. What number was it? 30, Matthew Moore. 28th, according to the timekeepers. No, they, ran all, they ran together, together all the way. The race, yeah, yeah. yeah. OK, well, sorry about the uh, confusion that entered into it, but you tend to take the timekeepers as authoritative, but occasionally slips happen. Well, coming up next is the MRL Historic Touring Car Challenge over 60 minutes. We'll get our papers for that. So we can just uh, check the results on the screen. The winner in the number 16 Alfa Romeo, James Colburn. The second, the Richard Merrill Alfa. And they finished first and second in the Alfa, Classic Alfa Challenge. In third place and winning the Dunlop All-Stars, the Mini of Ben Colburn. Fourth overall, Grant Williams with the Jaguar Mark II. Fifth, the Lotus Elan number 715 of John Harmer. Uh, and six, Lawrence Wars Mini Cooper S, number 71. Seventh, number 151, uh, is Johnny Kent's Cooper S. Uh, eighth, number 75, third of the Alfa Romeos to finish the car, so Alfa 75 of James Wright. Uh, ninth, number 77, Alex Jupe with an Alfetta GTV. And in tenth place, number 68, Mark Gordon with the Jaguar XK150 S fixed head coupe. Eleventh, number 96, Jonathan Horsfield's Alfa Alfetta GTV. 12th, number 32, the Austin Healey 3000 of Alexander Hewitson. In 13th place, number 56, the David Alexander Alpha Julia Sprint GT. In 14th place, Neil Merry with the Sunbeam Tiger, number 196. In 15th place, number 42, Colin Souter's Ford Mustang. In 16th place, number 21, Julian Cross, his Mini Cooper S. In 17th place, number 41, Richard Ibrahim with the Alfa Romeo Alpha Sud Sprint. In 18th place, number uh, 82, Ben Cater's uh, Alpha Julia Super. In 19th place, uh, number 19, Andrew Summerton's Lotus Elan. And in 20th place, number 23, Richard Dodkins with the Triumph SLR. So those are the top 20. Uh, we go further. 22nd, not quite sure what's up to 20, but 22nd, number 15, uh, is the Pandora of Andrew Prill. In 23rd place, number 11, the David Churchill Alfa Romeo Julia TI. 24th, number 66, the Alpha GTAM GTM of John Symes. 25th, number one, no, I'm getting ahead of myself. Uh, number 111 is Ding Boston with the Riley 1.5. Oh, that's shown here as the Austin Hilly Sebring Sprite. It was the Sprite, wasn't it? Yes, it was not the Riley 1.5. In 26th place, number nine with the Wolseley Hornet uh, is Neil MacArthur. In 27th place, number 142 is... 142 is the MG Midget with the Ashley body of Nicola Burnside. 28th, number 30, the Ma the Matthew Moore AC Cobra, but we question that, but anyway, that's where the timekeepers have it. In 28th place, 29th, number 64, uh, is Max Haycox, Alpha Julia Sprint GT. 30th, number 31, is the MGB Roadster. 
of Paul Clayson and 31st number two Clive Golding with a turn of mark two so there you are there's the results oh, there we go we got the we got the third place second place Richard Merrill Richard well done congratulations thank you very much Richard put up a really good uh, crack and race there but first of all it's uh oh there's a bit of a debate on who's which got which trophy but that our race winner and a big hand to James Coburn congratulations James Fabulous uh, victory, well done. One, two, three there. So we've got Ben, Richard and James. Just have a quick word with James. James, thank you very much. Uh, absolutely cracking race there. And uh, yeah, to fight your way through. Yeah, it did. Um, obviously, Grant and Ben got a really good start and then um, Martin came through and was uh, right on the pace straight away. Um, they were building confidence in the car and more and more and then it hopefully it was a really good show for everyone out there. So it's good. Yeah, thank you very much, guys. And we'll have a quick look. If I can, massive thank you, obviously, to all the marshals out there because it was horrendous weather this morning. They're battling for everything, and after it has happened previous year, year, they do a fantastic job. So uh, thank you, all the marshals out there. Yeah, thank you, James, for saying that. Yeah, absolutely. Wonderful. Richard, good race. Yeah, it was a good race. Yeah, no, I had a lot of fun. I, mean, I battled with uh, a very, very fast Jaguar in front of me, and I kind of tagged him, and my, my friend here, and then a fellow Alpha, sneaked up the inside while I was distracting him, and I had to catch him up afterwards, but I didn't quite get to him. Yeah, that Jaguar sideways coming out of the... It was amazing. I mean, it's going to make a great video, because, I mean, I saw more of his door than I saw of his boot, I tell you. So, no, fabulous race. OK, last one. Here we go. Ben, fabulous race. But the Mini just hadn't got the pace of the Alphas. No, unfortunately, it's a, it's a straight line circuit. So I only got 1293cc and uh, the Alphas have got much more power than we have. So, uh, But it was a good race. It was good fun racing with Grant in the Jag. So as it was in periods, so it was a good race all around. Um, but yeah, like, like, I said, like my brother said, uh, thank you so to Marshalls because they've done a great job again. And it's it's a torrential rain and it's been horrible all weekend. But so thank you to, to them for uh, making us do what we love doing. OK, thanks very much, Ben. Many congratulations. And we mustn't forget, Ben also won his class, actually. 